So if you want to be able to play and improvise over jazz standards, you need to understand the chord progressions that they are built out of. So here's every single chord progression that you need to know for jazz coming on up. So there are two categories of chord progressions that we're going to talk about. Number one, major, and number two, minor chord progressions. And then we'll talk about two very important bonus chord progressions at the end, so stick around to the end of the video. All right, so category one is major chord progressions. And the first chord progression you need to know is the two, five, one chord progression. The two, five, one chord progression sounds like this. Two, five, one. And a great example of this chord progression can be found in the jazz standard called Autumn Leaves, where we have a C minor seven, F seven, B flat major seven, which is a two, five, one in the key of B flat major. Now for this video, it's really important that you understand how chord progressions work, because if you don't understand that, you won't understand what a two, five, one actually means. So take a look at this major diatonic series of seventh chords. We're gonna go back to the key of C, since a lot of people know the key of C really well. At the very top line here, we have a C major scale. Now, when we harmonize each scale tone with seventh chords, it ends up sounding like this. The one is a C major seven, the two is a D minor seven, the three is an E minor seven, the four is an F major seven, the five is a G seven, the six is an A minor seven, and the seven is a B minor seven flat five or half diminished chord. And for jazz, we use Roman numerals. Uppercase means that it's major or dominant and lowercase means that it's minor. So when we look at what a two, five, one in the key of C major is, we see that the two chord is a D minor seven, the five chord is a G seven, and the one chord, the parent key center is C major seven. So it sounds like this, the two, the five, and the one. So going back to Autumn Leaves, when we look at this B flat major seven, we're really asking what is the B flat major scale? How do we harmonize that with seventh chords? And we come up with C minor seven, F7. I can't stress enough that the major two, five, one chord progression is so important in the jazz that you will see it come up all the time. So if there's any chord progression that you learn from this video today, it needs to be this one, the major two, five, one chord progression. However, there's also in jazz variations on the two, five, one. So let's go to the second chord progression where we have a two, five, one, like we have in the tune, but not for me. Right? But we actually start instead of a minor seventh chord, we start with a dominant seventh chord. So it's F7, B flat seven, the five chord, and E flat major seven, the one chord. Now we call this a secondary dominant, which basically just means we're like tonicizing the five chord here. If that goes way over your head, that's okay for now. The most important thing to know is that sometimes jazz musicians will turn that minor seven two chord into a dominant seventh chord and it really adds a different flavor to the chord progression. You'll see this happen in tunes like But Not For Me, but many others as well. Now the next chord progression is called the one, six, two, five chord progression. Another really important one. And this is exemplified really well in the tune My Shining Hour, where we have a one, six, two, five, one in the key of E flat major. And it sounds like this. E flat major is the one chord. C minor seven is the six chord. F minor seven is the two chord and B flat seven is the five chord. Very common chord progression, also often used in turnarounds. Now, another very common alteration to the one, six, two, five, one can be found in a tune like Olio, which is what we call a rhythm changes tune, in which most of the song form of rhythm changes is one, six, two, five, ones, but with one minor detail changed. And that would be we turn the sixth chord from a minor seventh chord into a dominant seventh chord. So in the case of Olio, it's in the key of B flat major. So it's B flat major major seven as the one chord, and then G seven, so the dominant six chord instead of minor, and then two, five, so. Right, so jazz musicians do this a lot, especially to the six chord. Again, this dominant six now kind of sounds like it's the five of that C minor seven, and it creates this tension and resolution sound. Now, yet another variation of the one, six, two, five, one is the one sharp one diminished 
two, five chord progression. You can find this in tunes like Have You Met Miss Jones, where in this particular case, the one chord is F major seven. So we have F major seven, then an F sharp diminished seven, which is the sharp one diminished chord, and then a two, the G minor seven, and then a five with the C seven. Now really what this sharp one diminished is doing is it's substituting for the six. So in the key of F, it would be D7 would be the dominant six chord. So instead of doing that, you're actually just playing a sharp one diminished chord because you can substitute that chord for, for example, a dominant seven flat nine. The D7 flat nine is almost the same as an F sharp diminished seventh, except for we have this nice movement in the bass that sounds good. So definitely be on the lookout for this kind of a chord progression. The next chord progression is a three, six, two, five, one, which you could also think of as a variation of the one, six, two, five. Now going back to Olio, what we have is we start with a B flat major seven, that's the one chord, a G seven, the six, a two, and a five. But then when we do it again, we actually go to the three, which is a D minor seven and instead go D minor seven as the three, G seven as the six dominant, C minor seven as the two and F seven as the five. And what happens is you can substitute the three chord in any given key for the one chord. And that's what happens in rhythm changes. So you'll oftentimes see this happen, not only rhythm changes, but many other tunes where we're using this as a turnaround to get back eventually to the one chord again. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that a lot of chord progressions in jazz move in fourths. For example, the two, five, one, let's say in the key of B flat major, we start with a C and then we go to an F, that's the five, that's a fourth interval away. And then a fourth interval away from the five chord is the B flat. So a lot of these chord progressions move in force, like even the six, the two, five, one, these are all moving in fourths. We call this the cycle of fourths. And there's no better tune that exemplifies this than the tune, All the Things You Are. And that introduces our next chord progression, which is the six, two, five, one. So All the Things You Are sounds like this. But what we have to start the tune is an F minor seven. Now the F minor seven is not the one chord or the key center of this tune. The one chord is actually over here in bar four, which is the A flat major seven. And so the way we get there is a six, two, five, one. So F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, A flat major seven. So when we understand the cycle of force, we can pretty much come to the conclusion that no matter what chord in the parent key center, the diatonic series we're playing, we can start on that and cycle in force to get back to some kind of a resolution center like the one chord. So be on the lookout for this playing out in jazz standards, like all the things you are and many others. Now, another very common chord progression in jazz is the one dominant four, seven, three, six chord progression. The one dominant four, three, six chord progression. A great tune that shows this is this tune called There Is No Greater Love. It's in the key of B flat major and it goes B flat major is the one and then E flat seven, the four chord. Now, normally, again, if we go back to our major diatonic series, we see that the four chord is actually a major seventh chord. However, in our particular case, we're actually borrowing from what's called blues harmony and making the four chord dominant. So we have the one chord, the dominant four chord, and then a three in the form of a D minor seven. In this particular case, it's a D minor seven flat five, but typically it would just be a regular minor seventh chord, but that's totally fine. And then to the six chord here. So B flat major seven, E flat seven, D minor seven to G seven. to some kind of two chord, which in this case, it does land on the two chord, but in the dominant seventh form, which we talked about earlier in the example of the two five one with but not for me. Now, by the way, if this is like a lot of information and you're like, I don't know how I'm gonna remember all these chord progressions, I don't want you to worry about that because ultimately what happens is the more jazz standards you learn, the more you start to see these patterns and you start to just understand what they mean automatically and you can hear them in your head, but you have to learn more jazz standards. So I have a free guide called Learn Jazz Standards 
the smart way. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And also when you sign up for that, you get for free our masterclass, Jazz Standards Mastery Formula, which will help you learn and master improvising over jazz standards. So click the link in the description below to get that for free. Okay, so now let's move on to the next category of chord progressions, which is the minor chord progressions that come up in jazz. So let's head back to Autumn Leaves. We recognize this from the major 251 to the B flat major that we first discussed. Now let's look a little further into the tune where we have this minor 251. And in this case, it's in the key of G minor. And so it sounds like this. It's an A minor seven flat five, or we call that a half diminished chord, to a dominant seven for the five chord, to a one chord, which in this case is G minor seven. Now again, we have to step back for a second and ask ourselves the question, how did I know in this case that the two chord in a minor key is a half diminished chord? Well, we also have to look at some sort of a diatonic series in order to understand how we come up with the chords in minor keys. The only problem with that is there are three different scales you need to harmonize, the natural minor, the harmonic minor, and the melodic minor. Now this makes things complicated because every single time you harmonize those scales with seventh chords, like we did with the major diatonic series, you come up with different results of what quality of chord it's going to be depending on it's the fifth or the sixth or even the one chord. So while we won't be going over all those harmonizations in this video, it's important that you do your due diligence there. But what I've come up with is this minor diatonic series of seventh chords, which essentially shows what I see most often happening in jazz standards, the way that they're harmonized. And this is really drawing from all three of those scales. It's not just one scale. So for example, this top line, unlike the major diatonic series that I had for you, is not a scale. It's just simply what the bass note of each chord in the series actually is. And so when you do that, you have in the key of C minor, a C minor seven is the one chord, a D minor seven flat five is the two chord, an E flat major seven is the three chord, an F minor seven is the four chord, a G seven is the five chord, and the six chord is an A minor seven flat five chord. And then finally, of course, the seven chord is B flat seven. Again, please, huge disclaimer on using this chart here. There are other options. These are just some very common ones I see in jazz standards. The next minor chord progression is the one, six, two, five in, of course, a minor key. Now, a good example of this is in the tune Lullaby of Birdland, where you have a one, six, two, five chord progression in the key of F minor. So that'd be F minor seven, D minor seven flat five is the six chord, G minor seven flat five is the two chord, and then C seven is the five chord. So you'll hear this come up in minor blueses as well. And so you really wanna know these. And to be honest with you, as far as the category of minor chord progressions goes, there's actually not a whole lot of them other than variations or chord substitutions, which we're not gonna fully dive into here. So as long as you know the minor 251 and the minor 16251, you're going to be covered for most of the time when looking at jazz standards. Speaking of chord substitutions though, there are a few that I want to give as a bonus here that I think do come up in jazz standards. The first one is, a tritone sub of five, two, five, one chord progression. So going to the key of C, we have a D minor seven, two chord, and then a D flat seven. This is a tritone substitution for the five chord, which would have been a G seven, arriving at the one chord. Now a tritone substitution, just to catch anybody up here, is essentially when you substitute one chord for another dominant seventh chord, a tritone interval away. So if the five chord of C is G, a tritone interval, or the flat five or the sharp four of the scale, however you want to think about it, is D flat. So if we make D flat a dominant seventh chord, then we have a tritone sub of, in this case, five. So now it's D minor seven, D flat seven, and C major seven. Now this doesn't always come up as being composed into jazz standards, but it's a very common substitution that jazz musicians will often use. Now another tritone substitution that is used in a minor key is a tritone sub of two. So in the key of C minor, that would be A flat seven, G seven, and C minor seven. So again, going back to what is the two chord in C minor, that's a D minor seven flat five. A tritone away from D minor is A flat. Make it into a dominant seventh chord, and now you have a tritone sub of two. 
So the next step you might be thinking is, okay, we know all these chord progressions in jazz standards, but how do I go about memorizing these chord progressions within the jazz standards so I don't forget them so that I can actually play and improvise over these tunes? Well, I have a video on the screen right now called How to Memorize Chords from Jazz Standards. So go ahead and click on that right now. Hey, also check out my Inner Circle membership. This is where we learn a new jazz standard every single month. Link down in the description or up here on the screen. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.